Oh, don't stop. Come on. Come on. Oh, you don't want to hear that. But why that song? For me to tell you why I chose that song, I have to tell you a story. Now, it's not a made-up story. It's a true story. It's about a little girl that I met when I was still an assistant DA in Shelby County. It's the story of a little girl that I met while an assistant DA in Shelby County when I was over the child abuse unit. This little girl came through the CAC, and I wish Nancy Williams was here today because she would tell the story better. But she came in having been victimized by a family member in all the worst ways. She's about this tall, little bitty, just thin as a reed. And when she came in, she had uh, gone through the forensic interview. She had met her advocate. She had spent time in the playroom. She had uh, a very supportive mother who saw to it that she signed up for therapy. And she went through those months of therapy with an incredible therapist. But the day came when she was finished with her therapy and her child advocate and her therapist walked her down the halls of the CAC and when she got to the lobby she looked up at her therapist with her big dark beautiful brown eyes and said can I sing a song? It's a very small audience in the lobby not maybe five or six people and that little girl with all the strength of Goliath turned her back because she said I want to sing but I can't look at you so she turned her back and faced the wall while those behind her you know, are fast becoming a puddle on the floor. And she sang those words. And think about the words that preceded the chorus. Why should I be unhappy? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely? Well, you and I know that the answers are, well, they shouldn't, honey. None of those things should happen to a child. But they do, and they'd happen to her. And if her song had stopped right there, I wouldn't have picked that song. But as she faced that wall, and she came to the chorus, her hands stopped trembling, her voice got stronger, and she sang, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. That day, that song became my favorite. And when they asked me to come today, sort of to introduce myself to you as the new commissioner and to pick a song, split second. Didn't take me any time. Somebody else may have struggled over their song, but I knew what has become my song for the work that we do. Now, that moment that that little girl turned her back and sang those songs, she became my hero. Because as tiny as she was, she was Goliath. As shy and quiet as her personality is, she was roaring like a lion. And though some people in that room may have still referred to her as a victim, she knew otherwise. That's not how she saw herself. How'd she see herself? As a survivor. And she taught all of us listening that day, or reminded all of us who've been at it for several decades, why we do it. So here I am, you know, a year ago, 
In January of 2018, I was being sworn in by Governor Haslam to be a criminal court judge in Shelby County. And in January 2019, found myself being sworn in as your new Commissioner of Children's Services. And I was asked on day one by every other person that I met, what's your vision for DCS? And I laughed and said, give me a minute, just give me a minute to come up with that vision. But in the back of my mind, my vision, my dream for myself professionally, as well as for the Department of Children's Services, is to be and embody that child. Strong, resilient, willing and ready and able to do the work required to move forward. And once you have done the work to move forward, being ready, willing and able to show people what you've done and to never, ever, ever be static. So when I look at you and, and, and review sort of the different organizations are here, I challenge you to do the same. Don't do things the same way just because that's the way they've been done. Don't decide that somebody that you admired showed you this 20 years ago, so it must still be the way to do it. So I've taken a hard look and continue to take a hard look at the Department of Children's Services and have so many goals and so many ideas for things that we can continue to do to move forward to do what? To ensure that every child in the state of Tennessee is safe, healthy, and in a forever home. How do we do that? First and foremost, prevention. And this is an, an example of not staying where we've been. You've heard, uh, I think Commissioner Williams talked about safe baby courts. Certainly we are all in the middle of safe baby courts with the AOC and with uh, Department of Health, excuse me, uh, Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse. We're trying to get to those children between zero and three and by extension, their siblings and their family and wrap them in services to the point that that child never experiences what my little hero did. To keep them out of the system and to help keep their parents supported and healthy so that they raise supported and healthy children. ACES and building strong brains in Tennessee. You'll hear more about it shortly, but think about that. You heard the principal talk earlier about trauma-informed schools. We have to change the mindset through education. We have to change the culture that we live in. And the people in this room, you're the people that can do that with your voices. That's what that child did. She was willing to use her voice to teach all of us something, and you can do the same thing. We have to acknowledge it, believe the science, and go from there, knowing that the way that we've looked at things in the past is not necessarily the correct way of looking at things. But you know, sometimes we don't prevent. And when prevention fails, my dream is for the Department of Children's Services to have the, an army of well-equipped, well-trained investigators that will swarm situation and along with law enforcement along with law enforcement ensure that that child whatever child has caused that response is healthy and safe but when a when a case goes beyond that and ends up in juvenile court my dream is for the Department of Children's Services lawyers to be the best in the courtroom and to represent in a way that leads no stone unturned and every child safe. And when it happens that a child has to be removed, what do we need? We need foster families. So Tennessee Fosters and, and all of the other providers, every one of us need to combine, need to be willing to work together to continue to, I hate to say it, but we need to be recruiting. 
we need to have a list of people. There you go. Go ahead and clap. for. <laughs> I'm with you. We need to have untapped homes waiting and willing with arms open to provide a home for these children that need a place to go. And if it goes beyond that and the case becomes criminal, I want the ADA to be the best lawyer in the office. And I want, we're in the courtroom, and I want justice to be swift and harsh. Why? Because we got to change the culture. We got to teach that children need to be believed. And we need to show that when we failed at prevention, this is the consequence. And the consequence will be sure, and that child will be supported by every person that can possibly support him or her. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't always turn out like it did for that little girl. I have another story. I got one minute. I'm going to tell it to you. In the mid-90s, I tried a case, my first case with a little boy. He was 9 or 10 at the time, and the perpetrator was a, a father of a classmate, and it was just classic grooming. Um, we tried the case. The perpetrator was convicted, got 20 years. He's out now. And truly, in that case, that little boy was a success story to me. He stayed in touch. He tracked me down periodically. And I remember getting an invitation to his college graduation. I was so excited. I remember getting an invitation to when he got his master's. Again, so excited. I was devastated the day that I got a phone call from one of the witnesses in that case when he, at 31 years of age, hung himself. One more reason that what Governor has, Lee has done with suicide prevention and being willing to put the funds into it, it's why we can't stop. It's why as happy as that song, I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, there's that other population that never reaches that point. That happened two years ago. So I carry with me every day both kids. And I bet every one of you have similar children and similar experiences. So carry them with you. Use them as your motivating force and work with me. I'm glad to be here.